Are you trying to decide whether to take the Panry LA or stick with the traditional Panry? Well, I am too. My recertification comes due in 2025, so I'm facing the same question. I've done some research about the Panry LA, so if you're interested in letting me do the work and getting a video summary of what the Panry LA consists of, the pros and cons, and what people have thought about it that have taken the pilot test, then stay tuned. Hello. Welcome. First, let's talk about the similarities between the Panry and the Panry LA. First of all, the main similarity is the content. They both cover the same core blueprint, cover the same general cross-section of medicine. They also both come to you for the very low, low price of only $350 per test. Yes, that was a little bit of sarcasm in case you can't read my face. Bingo! So now let's talk about what the differences are between the two. Well, first of all, the regular PANRI is a 240 question test. It's administered over a five hour window and you have to go to Pearson View official testing centers to have it done. The test is pretty fast paced. It comes out to about one minute per question. And of course you cannot use any resources or have anything with you when you go take the test. When you're done, you don't really get an immediate feedback about questions you've gotten wrong or right and you won't know if you passed or failed for about two weeks. Now the Panry LA, and by the way, LA stands for Longitudinal Assessment, is a much more flexible test. It is broken into 25 question exams that are given per quarter over a minimum of eight quarters, which is two years, or a maximum of 12 quarters, which is three years. So that means that the entire exam consists of 200 questions versus the 240 for Panry. Now you do have flexibility on what quarters you want to be doing the exam. If you have something coming up, a trip plan or a big family event, and you know you're not going to have time that quarter, you can just defer the test for that quarter and pick it up the next quarter that you have available. The only requirements are that you do at least one quarter in the first year and then one quarter in the second year. And of course, you have to have a minimum of eight passing quarters. You take the exam completely online, the comfort of your own home, and you can do it on just about any device that you can access the internet. So on your phone, your tablet, or laptop or desktop computer. You can also log in and out of the exam. It does not have to be done in one session, which is also really nice. And probably the biggest thing that separates it from the regular Panry is that you can use resources. It is perfectly allowed. You can use written and online resources whatever you want, you just can't phone a friend. In fact, discussing the actual content or sharing the content online in any way is a violation of the exam policies and could put you in trouble with NCCPA and cause you to face some disciplinary actions, including the possibility of having your certification revoked. Another great thing is you get immediate feedback on the questions, whether you answered it right or wrong. If it's wrong, they'll tell you what the right answer is and why the other questions are wrong. They'll also give you reference material to point you to some further study so that you can really learn that material and really understand it, which after all is the point of doing these recertification exams. So that also means that you'll kind of know how you did each quarter, although you won't get any kind of pass fail scores until you have a minimum of eight quarters done. Then you'll get a preliminary score. If you have successfully passed the standards for all eight quarters, then you're done and you're certified. If you haven't, then you continue testing each quarter until you either have eight successfully passed quarters or until you have failed out after the 12 quarters. Now, if you do fail, then you still have the option of taking the Panry. You'll have a year and you'll have three attempts within that year to actually pass. Now, what if you register registration is open, open July of 2023. What if you register for the test, but then you change your mind? Well, you can submit a withdrawal request and you can get a refund as long as it's done before January of 2023 when the test officially launches. Now, if you change your mind after January 2023, then you can still withdraw out of the process, but you will not get any kind of refund. And then at that point, you'll be subject to taking the regular PANRI in whatever your PANRI testing cycle is. One thing to know is that you cannot work ahead with the PANRI LA. So if you finished your quarter's questions 
You cannot go on and do any of the other quarters. They have to be done in each quarter. The reason for that, NCCPA says, is that they want to space out the learning and space out the questions so that you actually can retain more of the information. Now, one thing that's kind of great about the way the Panry LA is designed is that they will tell you the content category for each question and whether that question contains an image or not. That way, if you feel like you don't know much about that category and really want to go study before attempting the question, you can do so. Or if you're on your phone and it's got an image, you may want to log out and log back on a different device where you can have a better view of that image. A lot of the comments that I read from people who took the Panry LA pilot said that they did not really have much trouble finding the answers in the five minute time frame that you're given. So some people are advising that you don't even study before you sit down to answer the questions. Just have your resources ready and go search for the answer. You have to make sure that you select some answer within the five minute window. Because if you select an answer, even if you don't hit submit, you'll still have a chance. They will still grade that answer. But if you don't have anything selected and your five minutes is up, that answer is automatically counted as incorrect and you don't get a chance to do that question again. And along the same lines, any questions that you like forget to get to or just run out of time to do in that quarter will automatically be counted as incorrect as well. Now, from the comments I've read, many people felt like that they knew the answer to the question even without having to look it up. But that may be true, especially if you work in family practice and constantly working with a broad range of medical topics. But I think that it might be smart and might be the best strategy to actually do some studying. They give you the content category for each question. So you could go actually do some free category one CME before attempting the question. That way you can reinforce your knowledge, learn new things, prepare yourself for the question, all while you're knocking out some category one CME that is required for your certification anyway. It seems like a great way to stay up on your CMEs so that you're not left with a big chunk to do at the end of your certification cycle. If you don't know where to find the free category one CME, I did a video where I reviewed the top five free CME sources. If you want to go see that, you can click on the link above or you can watch the rest of this video about the Panry LA and then I'll put the link again at the end of this video. Now remember, your CME does not have to be all category one. You can review textbooks, journal articles, things like that in preparation for taking the test and those count as category two CMEs which can be up to 50% of all the CMEs that you need in a certification cycle. On top of that, you will also get the NCCPA 50% self-assessment CME bonus. Say that three times fast. So I really think that doing the, the studying of the, of the CME before you do the test is the smartest way to go because you really kind of help assure that you can pass the questions each quarter with no problem, meaning that you get the test completely done in the minimum amount of time, the eight quarters. Plus you stay on top of your CME and are making sure that each quarter you're getting your CME done. It just kind of sounds like a win-win situation to me. So who is the Panry LA good for? Obviously I would say for anyone that has test anxiety, that when you get in a testing center in that high pressure environment, you have a hard time taking tests or if you just don't like sitting through a five hour exam, then the Panry LA is probably for you. And it's also a good option for those who don't want to spend a bunch of time studying all at once for a big test that would rather have things broken out into smaller, more manageable chunks. It's also great for the people who live in more rural areas, far away from testing facilities, having to drive two to three hours for a testing facility, then sit for five hours taking a test and then drive home for several hours does not sound like a fun or healthy day to me. And for those who just like to always be comfortable, you can't get any more comfortable than taking the Panry LA at home in your pajamas. Now the Panry LA registration that's open right now is for people who need to recertify in the 2024, 2025, or 2026 cycles. The administration of the Panry LA will begin in January of 2023. Now you may be wondering if you're recertifying like in 2024, how that works, because you'll only have eight quarters. So what happens if you fail a quarter or if you don't have time to take the test in that quarter? 
Well, the NCCPA says that they will be working with individuals who are in that scenario. So even if your certification is due in 2024 and you start the process in 2023, you will have the full 12 quarters in order to be able to finish the exam. Now, who is the Panry LA not good for? Well, first of all, it's not even possible for people who have to recertify in 2023. You will still have to take the regular Panry. It's also not for people who need to recertify after a lapsed certification. If you don't have stable internet connection where you live, or if you are worried about technical problems, then you may want to pass on the Panry LA as well. NCCPA says that if you get disconnected while you're doing a question, or if you have any kind of technical issues, the question that you're on will be counted as incorrect and there's nothing that they can do about it. You're just kind of out of luck at that point. So if that's something that worries you, then you might want to do the Panry in person. And finally, the Panry LA is not for people who don't want to have to work on something over the next two to three years. If you want to study all at once, get the thing knocked out in one to two months, then the Panry LA is not the best option for you. So when does the Panry LA officially start? Well, registration is open now. It opened in July of 2022 and it will close in November, November 30th, 2022. So if you want to do the Panry LA for 2024, 2025 or 2026 recertification, you do need to register by November 30th of 2022 and the test will start in January of 2023. Now I still haven't decided which one I want to do. I really don't like the thought of having something kind of hanging over my head for the next two to three years, something I have to make sure that I work on most quarters of the next couple of years. I kind of am like the just buckle down study and get it done. But on the other hand, I do like the more relaxed pace of the Panry LA. I like the fact that I can use resources. I like the fact that I can take it from home. And I like the fact that it can help me stay up on my CME. So I make sure that I'm staying current with it and I don't end up with a big chunk that I have to hurry up and do at the end of my certification cycle. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one I'm gonna decide. I'm kind of curious what you think. I'm kind of curious to hear people's thoughts on what they're going to do and their reasoning for it. So leave that down below in the comment section. I will read through them and maybe it'll help me decide what I want to do or help other people decide who are watching this video. But don't forget if you wanted to watch that video on the review of free CME courses, then you can watch this video here. And also please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It really does help me out and I really appreciate it. That's it for now. Take care, stay sane, and I'll see you next time on The Medicine Couch. Bye.